I made a video the other day. I didn't think it would be so popular. So it was good news for anybody that owned a 24 megapixel camera and why that was good news. Uh, why we've actually reached a limit, but I didn't explain it fully. A couple of people thought they would throw me a zinger and they go, oh, well, you know, we got this Samsung NX1. It's a crop sensor camera. It's 28.2 megapixels. Okay, let's get to that in a second here. Um, it turns out that uh, camera sensors, really the technology, most people don't realize that a camera is not a, a sensor, by the way. It's an image processor. SNR firmware, 80 converters. Okay, it's the reason that the D7100 and D7200 have exactly the same sensor but radically different output, especially for high ISO performance. ISO, of course, is uh, input gain and uh, has not any relationship to actual exposure so far as shutter speed and aperture. Same reason also that the Nikon D3 and the D700 look, well, rather radically different. And I own both those cameras, so they have the exact same damn sensor in them. Camera's not a sensor, it's an image processor. What is the case, however, noise has certain frequencies. I think there's like seven different frequencies that noise has, and SNR firmware actually processes out that noise. What we've done currently, and we've gotten really good, it's like, well, there's always an advancement over the hill. That's correct. But there's only so much juice that you could squeeze out of an orange. Guess what? No matter how many ways, like we've bred sweeter oranges, and I think we used to use like these presses to squeeze oranges. We'd actually cut them in half through a slicer, and then we press them. And then we found out there's a new way that we could actually cut them a certain way, a certain geometry of the orange. And then if you not only press them, but took the remaining bits and, and flung them through a centrifuge, you'd end up with something like 8% more orange juice, which means a lot more money for those that were growing oranges. What the hell does that have to do with sensors? Same thing. We've actually reached the point at which sensor technology has gotten better, but it's still, it's still, the fundamental ceiling is this neat little thing called native gain. Okay, ISO is input amplification. Okay, there's a neat little thing that's actually called a gain on, that's not the volume knob, it's called a gain knob, like on a shortwave or professional radio, it's input gain. The native gain based upon shutter speed okay, and aperture. There's not going to be any magic new lenses developed any time in the near future. It's like, oh, we've come up with this new type of hybrid super glass that lets in twice as much light over the same period of shutter speed. No, that's, that's not on the horizon. The native gain has actually been reached, whereby which, like, I'm going to dial in and uh, take a shot here in the late evening at... Uh, <clears throat> given ISO, which of course is not exposure. ISO has nothing to do with the sensor, by the way, or native exposure. Certain aperture and a certain shutter speed. Signal processing really has reached... Its, now, well, I'm going to give you examples of this in a second. It's got all these different cameras by different manufacturers. They all revolve around a 3.8 to 4.0 micrometer pixel pitch. Interestingly enough, it's like, well, how on earth could you compare, for example, a Canon 5DSR, which is a 51 megapixel camera, to the Nikon D500, which is not only a crop sensor camera, but it's also 20.9. So we have a 20.9 megapixel DX crop sensor camera in the D500 and a 51 megapixel full frame sensor in the Canon 5DSR. What do both of these things have absolutely in common? Hmm, I don't know. What do they have in common? They're both basically 4 micrometer pixel pitch cameras. Uh, the Canon 5DSR is 4.14 uh, micrometers. The uh, Nikon D500 is 4.22 micrometers. They're both basically 4 micrometer pixel pitch. To get sufficient, and by sufficient I mean acceptable, dynamic range out of amateur, professional amateur, and certainly professional cameras, this is now the point at which we have reached with a given aperture and a given shutter speed whether we can't squeeze no more damn orange juice out of the damn orange. The orange, of course, being equal to the amount of light over a given shutter speed over a given period of time. We have reached that limit. We really have. It's like, oh, no, no, there's going to be future technology that's going to change that. Now, I'll tell you in this video and or the next one what that future technology is going to be, but it's not going to be improved gain. Um, like the D500 scaled up, for example, is a 47 megapixel sensor. You take 
uh, times 2.25 it's a 47 megapixel sensor if the Nikon D500 were scaled up full full frame sensor or for example the uh, Nikon uh, D7100 or D7200 the 24 megapixel DX crop sensor cameras times 2.25 there would be 54 megapixel so the actual limit of full frame uh, DSLR cameras to have decent dynamic range is right at 4 micrometers. Let's go down the line. D500, uh, Nikon D7100, D7200, Canon 7D Mark II, 4.1 micrometers, 5DSR, 4.14 micrometers, D7200, 3.9 micrometers, D500, 4.2 micrometers, um, Fuji X-T2, 3 point, right, this camera right here, 3.93 micrometers, basically 4 micrometers. Fuji X-T1, 4.8 micrometers. Do you see a little thread going on here? You see, it don't matter, this is the key point you should actually pay attention to, it don't matter if the orange juice squeezer is Canon or Nikon or Sony or Fuji, don't matter who the hell it is. We have reached the point at which we can say, with a 4 micrometer pixel pitch, we have squeezed all the orange juice there is a squeeze out of that orange over a given shutter speed and a given aperture. That's right. That is what my video meant. Because while it, you know, well, it was a really popular video, it seemed to confuse some people. And then people mentioned the Samsung NX1, which is a 28.2 megapixel DX crop sensor camera, which is rocking a 3.63, not that far from a 3.8. 3.6 versus 3.8 micrometers. Ain't no real big deal there. How much of a difference does it make? Quite a bit. So Samsung sacrificed four additional megapixels for worse dynamic range and low light performance at high ISO. If you want to go over to the comparison, you know, compare and contrast chart over on a Diaper and P review, go do that. Um, it breaks the threshold, which is basically 3.8 micrometers, and it has worse dynamic range than the other four four micrometer the other cameras with a four micrometer average pixel pitch the samsung nx1 does not even have close to the d uh, nikon d500 performance in low light gain or high iso therefore because there's not enough native gain there there just doesn't mean if it's you've got uh, plenty of light great 28 megapixel cameras great you see this little sensor here this is out of a, a common uh, point and shit. Yeah, I, I I didn't say point and shoot. I said point and shit. That's what I actually called. This uh, came out of a broken uh, Nikon Coolpix D7100, D7200, something like that. It's 1.52 micrometer pixel pitch, this little sensor. This is out of a typical point and shit camera. Okay, great. You know what the dynamic range on those cameras is? It ain't much. <laughs> and your shadow detail, forget about it. The amount of information that you can actually be extracted out of the shadows, forget about it. Large print, they're not made to have incredible dynamic range. Yeah, basically, right at the average uh, is like about 1.8 or 2.0 micrometer pixel pitch. Okay? Versus on a professional DSLR, we've reached the limit at basically 3.8 micrometers. This one is 1.5, 1.6. The new Coolpix uh, 7000 is 1.53 micrometer pixel pitch. The dynamic range isn't there, but the camera ain't made for that. It's called a point-and-shoot camera for a reason. It's plenty good enough to print out a lovely 8x10, adjust your contrast and clarity sliders, and uh, you know some sort of cheap JPEG editing program. It's perfectly good enough for that. That is the actual sensor out of a uh, Nikon Coolpix one that I actually used for years by the way and it just finally took a dump on itself because it got too close to my super magnet my super magnet literally went nom 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 and ate it up <laughs> that's actually true I made a video about that by the way um, like Fuji X-T2 3.93 micrometer pixel pitch Fuji X-T1 4.8 micrometer I own both of those cameras X-T2 is rocking the latest absolute peak most signal processing and I've uh, got the charts um, where I showed that the uh, the pixel pitch, like if, here I've got the charts, the actual specific hardcore testing between the X-T2 and the X-T1, the actual uh, uh, dynamic range between the two is just under half a stop. The Even though the Fuji X-T2 is 3.93 micrometers versus 4.8 on the X-T1, we have better signal processing on the X-T2. 
We have 6.8 uh, EV of dynamic range in the X-T2 and 6.5 EV on the uh, Fuji X-T1. I did very, very hardcore specific testing on that. So even though the Fuji X-T2 is smaller pixel pitch than the X-T1, 3.93 versus 4.8, we have much better signal. But we have reached the limitation. It's like it don't matter how much more you pound and stomp and yell and scream and, <laughs> you know... <laughs> You pound on that orange, there's only so much juice you could squeeze out of an orange. It's like, it doesn't matter how much technology advances. People are like, well, technology will find an answer to it. You know, girlfriend, yeah, technology can only do so much and get so much orange juice out of an orange. And it's the same thing with signal processing on a camera. The four... The, the sensor technology, by the way, is the same. The technology has improved, but the fundamental substrate, you know there's like a million ways you can make stuff out of dough and flour? But ultimately, guess what? You're still dealing with dough and flour. It's the same thing with camera sensors. They're still dealing with a silicon wafer uh, technology that is actually uh, reading in a microvolts uh, light and it's processing that, converting that AD converter and it's being processed and dropped onto your card. You're still dealing with silicon wafer technology. All the way from the beginning to currently. While the technology has improved, we're still dealing with flour and dough here. You know, there's still silicon wafer technology in there. The glass, there's not going to be like magic glass in the future. There's not. Unless there's something radically different like a field device for actually uh, taking in light and bending it with fields, which is the Faraday effect, by the way. That's actually totally feasible. I, I know that for 100% certain. Things are not going to change. The lenses, no bit in, is shutter speeds? No, nothing's going to change there either. Shutter speeds is shutter speed. Native gain is native gain. There's only so much orange juice inside that orange to squeeze. And that is why all these different cameras, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, okay, they're all reached the ceiling. <laughs> we can't go beyond basically 3.8 to 4 uh, micrometer pixel pitch and have decent, sufficient dynamic range to call it a an advanced amateur or professional DSLR camera. There is nobody else on YouTube that has made a video like this. If you learn what this means, then you'll understand. So where does that leave cameras? That means they're going to start developing better autofocus. They're going to start concentrating on the better 4K video features. Who knows what other sort of little BS feature. Maybe a little hand that comes out the side and wipes your butt when you take a poop, you know? There'll be all sorts of little frou-frou features added to the cameras. Some of them necessary. Like, I want faster autofocus. That's a valid request. Now we can stop concentrating on the megapixel wars, okay, and, you know, how many megapixels, I mean, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. It turns out that when it comes to camera sensor technology, <clears throat> to get a decent angel, the actual, <laughs> the limitation is right at 3.8 to 4 micrometers of angels as far as pixel pitch on a DX crop sensor. That's it. And it doesn't matter if it's FX or DX. Like I said, the Canon 5 DSR, which is a 51 megapixel, and the Nikon D500, which is a DX crop sensor, and 20.9 megapixels, they're both the same because they both basically have 4 micrometer pixel pitches, 4.22 on the D500, and on the Canon 5 DSR, 4.14. So 4.14 versus 4.22. Yes, you have a 20 megapixel camera and a 51 megapixel camera, the same thing. We got the same pixel pitch because why? Doesn't matter if it's full frame, doesn't matter if it's DX. We still have the limitation if that is sufficient dynamic range is set between 3.8 and 4.14. We have reached the glass ceiling where ain't no more orange juice can be squeezed out of that orange, i.e. the native gain, i.e. the signal that can be processed and have sufficient, decent, dynamic range to say, hey, this is acceptable, you know. I can make a 20 by 30 print out of this. Got great dynamic range to mess with the raw file in Lightroom. That's it. 3.8 to 4.0. This is the magic number of pixel pitch. It's literally like the magic number of the amount of orange juice you can squeeze out of an orange of a given size. We have reached it. We've climaxed. It's like, you know. There's only so many different ways you can skin a cat. That's a southern saying. Most Europeans and northerners won't get that. Like, what do you mean skin a cat? It's just a, it's just a saying, okay? 
It's the same way saying if you got only dough and flour, if you only got flour to mess with, there's only so many things you can make. It's like you can't make carrot cake out of dough, right? When you have dough to mess with, you could do all sorts of stuff with the dough, make cakes, make biscuits, but it's still ultimately dough. So we still have silicon wafer technology in here, and that is the magic ceiling. It's been reached, okay? Undeniable, irrefutable, deal with it, like it, don't like it, doesn't matter. It's the fact. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.